Hey everybody, welcome to the stream. Uh, we're just getting some technical difficulties out of the way there. I uh, hope all of you are hearing me. I see we do have some folks over in the chat. I will be able to talk to you guys if you type in the chat uh, as we get rolling along. Um, there are some uh, recommendations down in the description of the video for some reading materials that I think you'll find very good. They're, they're things that I approve of. And one of the things, um, one of the books is how to shoot video or shoot, yeah, how to shoot video that doesn't suck. <laughs> this was one of the first books that I got on Amazon. And um, I wanted to read, uh, it's by a gentleman named Steve Stockman. Um, it's very inexpensive. I think it's like nine bucks, um, but it's an awesome book. And I wanted to read to you guys the introduction to the book before we get started. So uh, bear with me here. I'm going to try to read this for you. So it says, great video is a communication tool of unparalleled impact. It can change history, inspire movements, share and amplify emotions, and build community. Nobody watches bad video. Not your employees, even if you tell them to. Not your parents, even if you send it to them and say, this is the cutest video of your kids. Uh, faced with the choice of watching a terrible video or something good, they can get with within a touch of a button or a mouse, and no reasonable person is gonna watch yours. They're, they're gonna watch the good video. Unless you're standing right over them, of course. Um, watch this, you know, you're gonna love it. Uh, they'll grit their teeth and they'll mumble, oh yeah, this is great, but trust me, uh, if you sent them a link, they'd be gone in under 20 seconds. So basically what the author is saying here is the opposite of good is off. So, you know, while we're not, when we start to think about making videos, we don't make them because we're trying to please an audience. We make them because we have passion to make the video. Um, so we're trying to convey a message uh, through that passion. But unfortunately, uh, passion gets lost in interpretation. And that's usually what happens between the shooting of the video and the thoughts in your mind and then using the software. So the whole idea behind this premiere course is basically every Monday, I'm going to have a live stream just like this where you can ask questions. We're going to address certain areas. It's not going to be a super long stream, but it's going to basically cover a few things each week. I don't want to overload you guys. This week's information alone, um, I included three reading materials with this because uh, there there is so much behind formats and, and containers and encoders and codecs and all of that kind of stuff to overwhelm you. And I don't want to do that. I want you guys to get in, have fun. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, this first week is going to be an introduction. So we're going to talk about the software. I'm going to answer your questions if you have any. Uh, if, as long as they're on topic, we're going to try to stay on topic of the software and that sort of thing. Um, and then uh, what we're going to do is next week, we're actually going to start working and actually create our first video. And we'll do some editing and that sort of thing. So you can ask your questions over in YouTube. Um, as I asked before, please do not share this link. It is for my Patreon uh, subscribers uh, alone. And I thank you guys very much for supporting me. And this is the least I can do. And I'm looking forward to doing more of these, not just Monday night, but I would love to get to the point where I'm streaming four nights out of the week or four days out of the week. So um, as long as we can get this running and keep it going, this is the way I'd like to deliver the content to you guys. I think it's great. You guys can hang out with me. You can ask me questions, all that sort of stuff. So just type it in the YouTube chat. When we're over in the software, it's actually going to come up on the screen so other people can see your questions as well. So please keep them nice and clean, safe for work. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll answer your questions as we go. So let's jump over to Premiere and get that rolling. All right, so you guys can see Premiere here and we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, shooting and doing setting up your camera and all that kind of stuff. And then we're gonna talk about this kind of interface thing going on and what all these little sections of Premiere mean and, and how to understand uh, what's going on with all these boxes. And I'm sure if, you've, if you're a photographer and you've played around with, um, and you've played around with Photoshop and that sort of thing, uh, then you probably see this and you think, well, there's a lot more going on here than just there is in Photoshop. And that's true, but I think it's just like a lot of the windows are just wider than what you're used to and divided up because you need to do more within them. Um, so when you're shooting a video, um, there's all sorts of different formats. There's 
uh, HD, there's SD, there's 720p, there's 10, 1080p, there's 4K, there's 8K now, there's 5K. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to go. Uh, I am shooting now mostly in 4K. Uh, all of my cameras, uh, even my phone and my iPad, they all shoot in 4K. So I'm able to gather a lot of 4K footage. I have a DJI Phantom that I fly, that's 4K. I have a, uh, an Osmo, DJI Osmo, that's 4K. Um, in my phone, my Samsung, in my Apple, my iPad Pro, that's all 4K. So I can gather quite a bit of different footage uh, with different techniques. Um, so I shoot in 4K, I edit in 4K. Uh, when you start making serious 4K images, generally you shoot in 5K, which is even more resolution, and then you downsample. Um, a lot of people like to shoot in 4K and then downsample to 1080p. Uh, that's a lot of work um, for not a lot of benefit, I don't think. Um, most cameras today, if you shoot in 1080p, you can get really nice quality and uh, you can basically edit and process in 1080p and there's no real loss there. So um, so let's talk about uh, the differences of making shooting a video with your camera and then processing it in something like Premiere um, and streaming live, which is what you're seeing tonight. So my cameras tonight that are that are here and then the one that I started on, we're both shooting and recording in 1080p at 30 frames per second. That just means that they're capturing 30 photos at a, a resolution of 1920 pixels by 1080 pixels, that's a height, um, and then doing that every 30 seconds and transmitting. So that's what's happening in this little window. Even though it's a little tiny thing, it's still shooting in that and then it's making it small for the broadcast. Um, that's streaming. Now, um, streaming, There's we could get into a lot of things about content delivery and all of that kind of stuff. And that's not really what we're here for tonight. This is more about creating videos and putting them together in, in sort of a film sort of fashion. So the number one format that really I think most of you are probably going to deal with right now is 1080p at 30 frames per second. That's pretty much a, a, a pretty go-to standard. If you're going to be uploading to Vimeo or to YouTube, those are going to be the formats that you're going to want to uh, look at. If you do 4K, you'll do 4K at 30 frames per second as well. Now, 30 frames per second is where motion looks really nice to our eyes. If you drop below that, say you start to get down near 24 frames per second, that's a standard of, of film. So if you want a film look, running your video or encoding your video at 24 frames per second and shooting your video at 24 frames per second will give you that, that look, but it doesn't complete the look. There's a lot of other digital things we need to do to the video. And we will do all of this stuff as we go. I want to teach you guys how to get a film look, uh, how to why we would shoot in 120 frames per second, let's say, um, all of that sort of stuff. But the basic format that we're going to be doing like next week is 1080p to start with just to show you guys how to make a basic video. From there, you have to decide uh, which video format best fits into all of the devices that you are going to be capturing with. You don't really want to capture a lot of 720p and then capture 1080p and 4K and try to put them all together um, because you're basically going to have to put everything at 720p because up sampling and making it larger is really going to be noticeable in your video. You can't really enlarge video that much. You can do a little, but you can't do a lot. You can shrink it down uh, and then there are some issues in that direction as well. So you want to be careful there. So look at all your devices, find out what your devices uh, their capabilities. So find out if they're all 1080p at 30 frames per 30 frames per second or 1080p at 60 frames per second. You're going to have to look in the manual or look online and find out. Um, once you have a list, you kind of want to go with whatever the lowest common denominator is. So if you have a camera that only shoots 720p, I have an, an old camera that shoots 720p. I don't use it anymore. Um, but if I was going to include that the video that I would shoot on my higher end cameras would all be 720p as well because I just, you know, I would want to keep them all the same. Um, and I, I'm not going to produce a video in 1080p and try to upscale that old footage because it's just not going to look great. So 
Make a list of all your devices, find out what your best formats are. That's where you want to start. That's going to be like finding out what your iPad can shoot, find out what your phone can shoot, because you will use all of these devices in creating your videos. Um, now, when you do that, it's, I, what I like to do is pick a format and make sure that everything is set to shoot that way. So when I'm out there, I'm not thinking about uh, setting up my phone. I'm not thinking about setting up my iPad or my camera. I do it all ahead of time. So when I'm ready to shoot, it's just click on the camera and start shooting. Um, don't uh, don't be trying to, oh, I got to change formats. I got to do all this kind of stuff because uh, ultimately you'll miss the moment or something will happen and, and you won't come home with the footage that you want. Um, I would suggest devices that shoot at 1080p at 30 frames per second for now. And you're going to find out that most any device that you have will probably shoot that at this day and age. Um, if you can do 4K, do 4K. It's a wonderful thing. You do need a pretty powerful computer to kind of make it so you don't get frustrated because uh, 4K is um, files that are um, 3,840 by... 2160 or 2000 yeah 2160 so they're pretty big files and if they're running 30 frames per second that's a lot of data that has to stream you need a good graphics card a lot of memory a lot of fast hard drives that sort of thing 1080p most modern computers today can handle just fine um so we're going to focus on 1080p but if you do have any questions about formats or anything like that you guys can always ask them over on patreon and i will be more than happy to jump in uh, make a video, answer your questions however uh, you need them to be uh, answered, and, and we'll take care of that for you. So once you've got a list of all your devices and, and the format that you're going to, to go with, that's what you're going to plug into Premiere when you start a new project. So essentially, you want to make sure that all of your media that you gather all conforms to that particular uh, that resolution. Now, you don't have to worry about codecs and oh if i shot it in, in mp4 or if i shot it in this and that and we're going to talk about those next um a little bit i'm going to leave you to kind of study on your own on those because it's it's a lot of uh it's a it's it's a crazy thing and, and i'm not i'm going to tell you don't think about it too much um i can give you some guidelines and then essentially you know you can go with that and then learn as you go uh, you can drive yourself nuts with all the codecs and things that are available out there right now. So um, so once you've got that in your mind, you're going to start collecting your footage. I usually tell folks in the, the book that, um, that I recommended to you, the uh, How to Shoot Video That Doesn't Suck by Steve Stockman. Uh, the link is in the description of this video. Uh, that book will talk to you about the eight, the eight second rule and how to shoot scenes and think about things differently. And suddenly you'll find that there's this whole new world out there of, of creating uh, a meaningful video to bring back the memories that you had while you were on vacation or uh, that you had at a, at a wedding or whatever. So um, let's talk a little bit about codecs. Um, codecs are essentially software encoding programs that handle um, translation or a language between the computer display and streaming or and in the video themselves displaying properly played on devices. So there are many codecs that act as wrappers. Uh, some of them uh, act as actual, like if you want to think of them like a book and that uh, the video is inside of a book uh, and there's different formats to, to the book. Uh, so some video codecs, they tend to... Um, compress the video a certain way to make them, you know, look a certain way, or, or some of them have some qualities, others are fast, some are slow, uh, some are hardware, some are software. Uh, right now, the pretty much the standard, and there are new codecs coming out, but pretty much today, H.264 is the standard, and MP4 is also another standard, and of course, Apple uses .mov, stands for movie. Um, those are pretty much... Uh, you know, you can MP4s, MPEG files, all of those are pretty much uh, wrappers. Uh, I've even taken some files uh, when I couldn't get them to work in a certain uh, program and just changed the extension on them and suddenly they work. And, and so some of them are just wrappers that hold raw data. And all of that, that file name does is say, use this codec to decode it. 
Uh, and if it's compatible, then it'll decode in uh, a different codec. So sometimes you have to, you know, do that when you have a file that doesn't work properly. Um, I'm not going to, like I said, go into deep because uh, it is a very deep well. And we could spend hours and hours and hours talking about codecs and talking about encoding when mostly all of it's already done for you in Premiere, which I think is really great. So what I'd like to do now, um, if nobody has any questions on codecs and formats um, and all of that kind of stuff, is I'd like to jump into Premiere and talk about the layout of Premiere and some basic features. All right. So we have Premiere up here. You guys have been watching patiently and, and uh, staring at my tiny picture up in the corner. Um, so Premiere has some great um, setups or workspaces, just like uh, if you haven't explored them in Photoshop, uh, if you come up to the window uh, menu up here and you come down to workspaces, you can see that there are many different styles. We can do titles or we can do libraries or effects. Uh, editing, straight up editing or assembly of videos. Each one of those will rearrange the windows in a more user friendly uh, fashion so that basically uh, what we can do is, is it, it just makes it easier to navigate while we're working. And of course you have also all of these different things that we can call up on the side here if we're, if we're doing certain uh, items. Like one of the things that I use a lot is Lumetri scopes and we're going to talk about grading video in a later episode of this. Um, so uh, we'll get into how to grade and proper, properly grade video for color and whatnot. Um, it's, it's very simple. So um, so what we're basically going to do tonight is I'm going to show you around the panels. We're going to throw in a video really quick here to show you how it works um, and just load up something um, just to kind of give you an idea of how these panels work. So let's talk about each of the panels. They have it divided up nicely. It's been a long time for Premiere to kind of get this together, and uh, they finally have a really nice layout now uh, in Premiere, I think, and it's very intuitive. Just like any program that we work with, there is a place that holds all of our files. So if I load some files into this, let me uh, call up another window over here off to the side and find my video renders folder. And... Just bear with me for just a second here. I'm going to pull in some, uh, let's pull in some video here from something. Most of it's over on my server where it's been rendered. So let's just see here. All right. So we've got a couple of videos here, I think. Really not sure what these are. Should have had these out for you guys. I apologize. Hold on one second here. Let me call up. A video that I edited recently. Do, 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 do. I'm looking for completed projects here somewhere. All right. Video storage. That would be where I put it. It's here somewhere. All right. Completed projects. Ta -da -da. All right, so let me just pull in. So I'm just pulling in a file. I'm just going to drag it and drop it uh, into the import media. Now you can double click here and you can do all that sort of stuff. If you want to double click on something to uh, drag it into the scene, uh, you can. this will open up a browser. If I double click here, it opens up a thing and lets me load in some stuff if I want to. I can load audio files. Uh, I'll load my latest tutorial here and go ahead and do that. And we can open them that way as well. So you can see it, it pulls all of these in nicely. Now, if I want to, I can click on these and I can see what their formats are just by right clicking. And I can look at uh, the properties of this file and it'll bring up another screen right here. And it'll tell me it's 1920 by 1080. There's our size. That means it's 1080p. That's the resolution for that. And it's shot at 30 frames per second. It is an MPEG movie, which is MP4 and it tells you about the audio and whatnot on here. If I am happy with that format, if I drag this over to the timeline, it will automatically create a project, as you can see as I hover here, in 1920 by 1080. So if I drag and drop, you'll see that it appears in the timeline and now this starts to fill in and also our program filled in up here at the top. So this program window is where our finished video will appear. 
So as we make edits down here in the timeline, um, this footage is non-destructively edited. So we'll, we can edit this any way that we want to. So you can see like in this video here, there's a place here where there's breaks. And if I want to, I can use the little uh, razor blade tool here and I can cut these breaks out of here, nice and simple, and erase them. And now that's edited, but the video isn't ruined or changed or anything like that. All it is, is just I've edited it and now I can make that seam transition right there between those two pieces nice and smooth. So you don't even notice there's an edit there. And that this little window just shows me what the program is going to look like after I make all my edits. And that's live. It's accelerated through your graphics processor. So it's it's basically uh, a really nice uh, speedy. If I, I put some sort of effect on here, it's going to show. Um, if I do any sort of motion or uh, any type of rotation to the, uh, the video, that's going to come out nice and smooth here. Uh, depending on the speed of your computer, you may have to dial down its preview. Um, the, this little setting over here is for previews and what it does is it allows me to go with half quality or quarter quality. And when you do that, when it samples the video, you can kind of see, if I make it larger here, let me make it larger so you can see it. You can kind of see it's not as clear uh, as it would be uh, if we, it was in full. When we put it in full, it's the full amount of video. So you, you get all of the resolution, all of the quality. And it also plays back the audio and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Premiere also has a feature where it'll allow you to output to another monitor so we can actually send uh, the program video to a whole monitor if we have a secondary monitor. Uh, I usually do that when I'm working 1080. I'll put this on my big monitors, one of my cur big curve screens, and then I'll designate the monitor that you folks are looking at right now. I'll designate that to for my output of my video so that I can see like what it looks like at full resolution and full screen because that's how I'm going to present it to the world, obviously, so I want to make sure that everything is good. I'm not going to get into transitions and all that stuff. That's next week. We're going to talk about editing and uh, putting together your very first video. Um, but I did want to show you what each of these windows does. So we have our clip bin over here, which also includes a list of effects. You can search through effects by using the search box here. So if you wanted to type in fade, everything that has the word fade in it will suddenly come up. So we've got video. Uh, we've got audio transitions, we've got uh, Lumetri presets, all sorts of stuff there. Uh, your media browser allows you to uh, look basically like Lightroom or like uh, Adobe Bridge, and you can look through uh, each particular project or folder right here within Premiere. You don't ever have to pop out or drop and drag and drop. Um, and libraries works with your CC account. So if you have a CC account and you have stuff on the cloud or you're working in collaboration with somebody else, you can store things in the cloud and then they can have it pop up in their library as well. So you can sh easily share files back and forth that way. And obviously we have all the other stuff here, info and markers and then file history where we do our edits and histories, we can go back and forth. Uh, and then a list of markers where we've marked our video for ins and outs or special sections of video that we need to keep track of. Stuff I use very little of um, these days. I used to use markers and whatnot a lot, but anymore it's a very, the way I edit, it's a very linear fashion. So I'll, I'll, I'll go through and do a rough edit, then I'll go do a fine edit, and then I'll watch it all the way through, and then I'll go back and spot hit things that I want to edit from there. So I very rarely use uh, markers anymore. Um, then over here in our timeline, we have all of our tools, just like Photoshop. And remember, you can always grab any of these and make them larger. Just about every pane has a, a way to make the track larger if you need to see it larger or smaller. Like uh, when I'm working on audio, I want the audio track to be large so I can see where the breaks and whatnot are. And then down at the bottom, you also can drag this way and make things larger and smaller as well to zoom in and zoom out. Um, you can solo tracks. You can mute tracks. Basically, this will just mute the audio so I can play back just video if I want. So I can get into, let's get into something that actually has some video in it that's moving. You can see me moving around. Try there. 
So here it is just without the audio, I have the audio muted. If I unmute this, you'll hear the audio. So if you wanted to, you also can record an audio track to the video. So if you wanted to narrate a video or whatnot, you can record from right here within Premiere, which is a very nice feature. There's also uh, effects that you can add onto stuff. You can do that just by dragging and dropping. So you find an effect that you want. Let's say we would like our video. Let's go back a little bit. Let's find a, something where there's a photo. I think up here there's a photo. Scrub. There we go. All right. So here's a photo. If I wanted to change the look of the video, I can just grab a hold of a Lemetri setting over here. Let's just pick one of these. I like that one. And if I drag it and drop it on top of the video clip here in the timeline, you'll see it changes the video clip. And then up here under effects control, as long as we have that video clip chosen, you can go ahead and you can now edit under Lumetri. We can go ahead and edit these the temperature of the video you can see we make it colder or hotter all sorts of stuff very easy to do very simple and very intuitive premiere has come a long way i remember when i first tried premiere i, I was actually on uh vegas sony vegas before this long time ago and um i remember first trying premiere going oh no i'll never figure out premiere but it didn't take long um and it was kind of out of a necessity because it had so many features that basically i wanted to use and learn so um, there's also an audio clip mixer, so you can do all of the mixing and whatnot. And I highly suggest just throwing a clip in here and playing around with it. Edit it, slice it, dice it, uh, and all that kind of stuff, just so you can kind of see how it goes. Um, you can also do some neat things, like if I wanted to include a thumbnail uh, in my... Let's, let's take uh, care of that effect. So if I click back on this and I go to Effects Control, and then I click on the effect and hit the Delete key, just takes that effect back out. Um, if I wanted to make this my thumbnail for my video, let's say, uh, Premiere has a great feature. This little camera right here, if you click on that, it will take a screenshot, full res, and it will also import it back into the project, or it'll save it in the folder so that you can then make it into your thumbnail for your video. So it allows you to capture one of your frames and make uh, a thumbnail out of it. So a uh, very nice feature that's, uh, that's built into Premiere as well. Um, so if we click on um, our different uh, items here in the uh, panel, let me just show you. Uh, if I want to change, like, say, the position of this video or the size of this video, I can just grab a hold of scale and we can change the scale of the video. You can see it's 1920 by 1080, so it's fitting right in there perfectly. And I do have, um, I did want to show you guys, if you're clicked on the sequence that you're editing or clicked in this box down here, uh, where it says untitled on it, which is the timeline for your project. And then you come up to sequence and then to sequence settings. That will tell you what your current format is. So you can see we're working in 30 frames per second. Let's look at some choices that we have available. So you can slow this down or, or speed it up. Although if you take 30 frames per second and you move it to a 60 frames per second uh, project, it's not going to give you 60 frames per second. It's just going to double each frame's length to two frames. So essentially one frame will equal two frames. It'll still, your footage is still 30 frames per second, just played uh, at a higher bit rate, which would make no sense. Uh, it's a waste of, uh, I mean, it'll work, but it's kind of a waste of uh, footage. Now, if you have critical uh, footage and you, you, you're mixing your footages between 60 frames per second and 30 frames per second, you might want to put your project in 60 frames per second and you you basically your 30 frames per second stuff will just be 30 frames per second. Um, and then when you get to the 60 frames per second material, it will display properly and it'll look all nice and smooth and pretty. Um, but usually I'm, I usually tell people it, hindsight is 2020. Uh, try to keep all your footage uh, of equal frames per second unless you're doing slow motion or something like that. Uh, but as far as uh, you don't want to usually speed up things if, if it's, uh, you know, you don't want to go to 60 frames per second if you're not shooting at 60 frames per second. So let's just look really quick at what this sort of looks like. So we watched a little bit of footage. Now it's not going to make much sense to you. Let me find some footage that's actually um, 
motion based. So let me just, let me look at this real quick. We're gonna keep this pretty short because I don't wanna get too deep into editing. Let me get rid of that. Uh, let's see, I don't have anything. Do I have anything here? Yes. Oh, there's some motion, but it's, that's not the motion we need. What kind of motion do we have? Do we have anything that's moving? Oh, let's see here. Travel, travel. We have some travel video. Try to find something for you guys that will actually make sense to you. It's moving. Hang on one second. We're finding some moving video for you. <laughs> okay, I think I got something here. Band videos. I could play some band videos for you guys. That would be something. Um, let's see here. We're deep in it now, folks. All right, so let's just grab something that's... I don't know what format these are in, but we'll try it. All right, let's grab that video. <laughs> All right, uh, driving. All right, so does not match the sequence settings. Um, so we're just going to keep the settings that we have right now. Let's look at what these actually are, the settings uh, on this are. So this is 720p. Yeah, so this was... Uh, Oh, is this going to be, it's going to be, I think this is going to be, yeah. All right. That's not, that's not right either. Yeah, that would be um, stop motion as well. So let's find something that's not stop motion on a waterfall. It's a waterfall. Let's see what we changed our sequence to again here. Uh, property. All right. So this is 1920 by 1080 and 29.97 frames per second, which is NTSC standard, okay? So essentially what we have here is just a short waterfall clip with lots of audio, so I'm gonna turn that off, but we just have a waterfall here playing. Let's open that up so you guys can see it. I'm gonna make it big. So there we go. Let's look at the, we'll look at the waterfall at 29 frames per second. Now, this might look a little weird to you um, on, uh, the screen or in the stream, but essentially um, this should look very smooth. To most people, it's going to look nice and smooth. I, the preview that I'm looking at here is nice, smooth video. So let's change this now in our sequence. Let's change our sequence now to a ridiculous 10 frames per second. So that means that it's going to have kind of like a shutter effect. It's only going to play... 10 frames every second. So it's going to look choppier. So let's look at that. So now it's going to look a little bit like a stop motion. The video is going to be the same length. It's not going to change, but it's basically playing only 10 frames every second. So it's kind of choppy. Let's change now to the film standard, which is 24 frames per second. It's actually 23.976 frames per second, if, if y'all care about that. All right, let's set that. And now let's play back the video now. So the video looks still pretty smooth, but it's got kind of more of a, I don't know, it's got a smoother feel to it, even smoother than 30 frames per second does. Um, and that's the magic of film. It's like a slight stutter, but not really anything that you can identify. It's kind of like the sweet spot in our brains that gives it that kind of look, okay? Um, and you'll see here too, if I change the sequence settings now to 60 frames per second, 59.954, which is NTSC standard, you're not really gonna see any difference. It's still playing back at 30 frames per second. What the program's actually doing is taking every frame and it's actually holding it for, it's playing the first frame again uh, a second time. So you're ending up still at 30 frames per second because that's what it was recorded at and you can't really change that. You ha you're stuck with what it's recorded at. You can't make it more frames per second. You can make it less, but you can't make it more. 
So that's kind of how the frames per second works. Most of what you're gonna be doing is shooting in 30 frames per second. I would highly suggest shooting in 30 frames or 60 frames per second if all your devices can handle that. And if you want to go for a film look later on, you can slow, you can change it to 24 and you're not gonna have any quality problems. Um, it's just ridiculous to take shoot it at 30 frames per second and then try to process it at 60 frames per second. It's just not, it's not gonna be really 60 frames per second. So the only way you get that is to actually shoot for 60 frames per second. Um, I also promised to talk to you guys a little bit about camera settings. Um, there is a rule for motion video that's known as the 180 degree shutter rule. Uh, and what that means is that you generally take your frames per second. So let's say in this clip, I'm shooting at a 30 frames per second pace with this video. My shutter speed or ideal motion in this video is going to be 1 60th of a second for my shutter, which means it's we take the number 30 frames per second, we double it times two, and we put it over, we put it under one, so we put it, we make it into a fraction. That becomes our shutter speed. So 30 frames per second is 60 frames or 1 60th shutter speed. Now, if we shoot at 60 frames per second, we're, we would do 1 over 120 or 1 over 100, which is pretty close to what most cameras will do. What that does is that it means that in between each frame, without getting into it too technically, and you can Google this if you'd like, but what happens is the shutter is opened and, and then closed each alternate. So it's basically what's happening is that it's not putting a shutter open and closed in between frames. So we're not getting like a half frame or a blurry frame because of the way that video is captured. So by do, by setting our shutter speed like that, when we do a side to side motion, it looks like what we see in our eyes. It has a nice comfortable blur to it, but it's not that stop stutter stuff when we move sideways or it doesn't move in a weird look. Um, and that's the 180 degree shutter rule. Now, if you're shooting in bright light, that might be a problem because you can set your camera at 30 frames per second, 1 60th of a second on your shutter, ISO 100, even ISO 50, is still going to be pretty blown out if we're at f, you know, 3.5 or f 2.8. Uh, and even if you jack that up to f8, you're still going to be dealing with quite a bit of brightness. Now, for you drone owners and guys who are shooting with cameras like your, your uh, cell phone cam, uh, most of these cameras have a 2.2 aperture. Um, and your, your uh, I think that the uh, DJI... Phantoms, they have 2.2, uh, I think, or 2.4, and then some of them have 2.2. And the problem is, is that it's so bright uh, that it just looks all blown out. So you're going to have to get an ND filter and kind of go out and test it. Test in bright light, set it, set the 1 60th, 30 frames per second, and then see if, you know, it's too bright. If it is, you got to slap a, an ND filter on there. I have an ND six and ND eight and an ND two or something, ND four. Um, and it, depending on the weather conditions, I have to put one of those on my fixed aperture cameras. So it'd be cell phones, pretty, pretty shot. You can't really do too much with that. And, and I don't use the cell phone for much. Um, sometimes a little bit of, uh, still kind of not moving photography, I guess you'd say, or time lapses, that sort of thing. Uh, but most, most of the time I'm taking, my DSLR out with me, or I'm taking my drone for drone footage, or I have my Osmo that I'm using from DJI. And all of those you we make sure is set for the uh, 180 degree shutter rule. So that's gonna be pretty much it, I think, for this time around. Next time, we're actually going to work on cutting a video with you guys. Um, and I suspect you'll probably have more questions during that, but we're gonna put together uh, this week, I'm going to go out and I'm going to shoot some footage and I'm going to put together a video uh, and show you guys. I'm going to put it together live uh, during the stream so you can ask questions. Uh, you can see how my brain works and how I add music and all of that kind of stuff. So I thank you guys very much for joining me for this live stream. Uh, I hope you got something out of it. Uh, I didn't see anybody typing in the live chat. Uh, so um, I'm, I'm hoping I didn't miss anything. Uh, we didn't see anything appear on the screen, so uh, I think we're probably good. And uh, 
if you're in my Patreon uh, and you know anybody else who's, who wants to learn Premiere and do this sort of thing, uh, please give them my Patreon uh, site, which is patreon.com, the Explorographer, and get them involved. For a buck a month, uh, they can come take a course on Premiere. Um, so, yeah, I'm glad to, that you guys joined me, and we'll see you next Monday, uh, same time, 8 p.m. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later. Yeah.